Our next speaker is Louis Barron. He works at Ernst Cafe here in New Orleans, and he's also an avid volunteer at the New Orleans Mission. Tonight, he has a very personal story to share. So please give a warm welcome to Mr. Louis Barron. Thank you. Uh, like I said, my name is Louis. Uh, I'm a volunteer coordinator at the New Orleans Mission. Um, I always was not a volunteer coordination there. Um, I used to stay there, but before I tell you how I became there, I'd like to you know, uh, tell you a little story about myself. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, I came from a small town outside of Texas where everybody knew everybody. You couldn't even skip school without somebody even knowing where you were. That's how small our town was. Uh, my family was well known. We were just well known in that, in that family. Well, when I was growing up, I used to call my parents Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde because when we were in public, it was like one big happy family, you know, and everybody was all smiling. But when we were behind closed doors, it was a whole new situation. Well, my dad used to hit me and my brother. And as time went on, you know, it was going on. Uh, when I turned 13, I fell in love with this guy named Daniel. Me and Daniel were together for a long time. I know it's kind of hard, you know, because at that time, it wasn't a big thing, you know. Gay people, it wasn't like a, it wasn't something that was like known, you know, it's just, it, was, it wasn't like, a, like it is now, you know. It's like everything was quiet, nobody didn't speak about it, you know. It was just something that you didn't talk about. But me and Daniel was, that's who we were. So as time went on, um, me and Daniel graduated, we worked. He worked for a law firm, and I worked offshore. Um, we traveled all over the world, we did what normal people would do. Um, we met two great people, uh, Maria and her family. We met Kim and her family. Well, Daniel, Kim, and me, we all came great friends. We were just one, like a family deal. Well, at that time, me and Daniel didn't know that Kim's husband was beating her. But we knew something was going on, but we didn't really, like, we couldn't put our hands on it yet. So one night, Daniel was out of town, and I was just getting off of work. But at that time, I was also doing drugs. Daniel knew, but he really didn't say much about it. You know, um, I was just just sitting at home. I was tired, so I did what I did. Um, Kim came over. She was black and blue. And at that time, I was mad because even though my dad hit me and my brother, he always had a respect and told us, you never touch a woman. Because he never hit my mom. He never hit none of my sisters. You know, he had that respect towards women. And that's one thing I think he saw in me. It's like, regardless how mad you get, you know, you never lay your hands on a woman, you know, because he always told us that even though I used to hit y'all, but I, would I always respect my, my wife and, you know, and my, my sister and him. He said, because a man that hits a woman was a coward because he couldn't, he couldn't defend himself. Um, at that time, you know, I went down to the house, and me and Kim's husband got into a bigger argument. Her son was supposed to be at a friend's house, but I didn't know he came back in. But... So I went down there, I was mad um, at that time. I always kept the gun with me at that time because I got up late at night and it was for security. So I went in and we started an argument. Well, at that point, I had just pulled out the gun and I shot Daniel point blank. I mean, I shot her husband point blank. And at that time, I didn't realize that her, her son was standing behind the husband. So the bullet went through the man, her husband, and killed him. Well, I got 10 years for the son. I didn't get ten years for the for the for the guy, but um, I was incarcerated for ten years. I just got out this year, went to um, came back to New Orleans, uh, went to stay at the Salvation Army. At that time I had got a friend from Maria, got a letter saying my brother had passed away, so it took a toll on me. So one day I was walking down the Claiborne Bridge. I said, you know if I just jump, nobody would never know. Just me, myself and I, nobody missed me. So when I attempted to jump, a uh, guy named James had just like, he was like right like an angel right there at that time. He had caught me. Um, they gave me the help that I needed after I got out and to the medical center that I was in. I went straight to, they had, the counselor told me to go to the um, Noah's Mission where I could get the help that I need, so I did. Um, I've been there ever since, but after a couple of months, I finally got a job. I got my own place now, you know, because... Even though I was homeless at one time, doors were opening up for me, you know, and I sh had shared my story with other people. 
So uh, as in closing, I'd like, like to let y'all know, share your story with somebody. Tell somebody the things that you've been through because you never know how it may impact on them. And volunteer, you know, give your time back because, you know, you never know what's going to go on. You know, you never know that, that it may rock bottom. You may, you know, everything may fall out. And you may have to stay at the New Orleans Mission or the Salvation Army or at the Osmond, and, you know, you never know. And volunteer, you know, give back, you know, because it's a rewarding, you know, and I've learned a lot. As in closing, I'd like to say thank you and have a great night. <laughs>